most people are going to disappear, but there will be, as Alex Fetsky says, the remnant will stay. They're the people that get into it. They come here for number go up. They get all excited about it and they're like, what is this? I want to know more about it. And they start to put in the proof of work and they start to read the books, Beers for Bitcoin, Parallel, The Hidden Cost of Money, Crypto Sovereignty. They go through all of it, reading the Bitcoin time. Hey guys, welcome back to the show today. I'm here with Sean, which is the host of Good Day Bitcoin. Hopefully I'm pronouncing it Australian enough. Perfect, mate. <laughs> How are you doing, brother? Yeah, re really good. Thanks so much for having me on, Mauricio. For those people, they don't know you. Do you mind to give us an intro and tell us a little bit about yourself? Based here in Australia, do a live show five days a week, Monday to Friday, 7.30 a.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time. The live show focuses mainly on the news, what's going on. It's strictly Bitcoin only. Occasionally, we'll bring up altcoins when they ultimately rug people or something's gone wrong. People have less their Bitcoin on the exchange, um, but otherwise 100% Bitcoin focused and then mixing a whole lot of podcasts like what, what you're doing here. Mauricio, I had Walker on this morning, you know, guests like Eric Case and Lawrence Lepard and stuff, just on a mission like you are to spread the orange pill and talk to the best and brightest minds within this space that is separating money from state. Why do you think we need Bitcoin? The most pressing issue is since 2020, everyone's woken up to the fact that inflation is a real thing. And maybe people don't understand what's caused inflation, which is directly the government printing more money, stealing your purchasing power. But people are feeling pain. And when people feel pain, they want to do something about it. And before Bitcoin, those people would speculate in Australia, we've got a, a housing Ponzi uh, scheme going on here. Otherwise, the, the stock market or there's gold, which none of those things are really done well or barely kept up with inflation. Now we've got the, the hardest form of money ever that's existed in all of human history. And it's only 15 years old. It's still only a teenager. So Bitcoin's benefited me and changed my life in so many ways. Like the number go up and stuff. Cool. Like, like that's great. I, you know, we get in here for the greed. But Aside from that, it's everything that comes along with Bitcoin, putting in the proof of work, eating right, drinking right, sleeping right, going to the gym, providing value to the community, whether it's the online community or, or with the businesses and stuff that we're running here at home. So just Bitcoin in so many ways has made my life better, made me a better person. And it's a way to be able to give back and let people know that there is an option just to be able to opt out because the state's going to have to print money forever. We've seen them to money supply, you know, over the last hundred years, it just goes up into the right. And every time they print money, they steal people's life. Like nobody has really learned what money is, where it comes from, that it's not backed by gold. As we learn these things within Bitcoin for so many people, I think like at the thousand hour mark or even before they're like, okay, I understand this, it's done good for me, I have to pay it forward. And that's what Bitcoin's all about, is putting in the proof of work to be able to build a better society for everyone, not just for the individual. I actually had a podcast with Peter Schiff and Da Vinci and the title was Gold versus Bitcoin. And my first question was, what is money? Because I think like we have to go back to the basic because for me, I was attracted by the gains, right? I was like, I'm going to buy this thing, which I don't know what it is. And I'm going to become super wealthy and rich. This was the plan, but I didn't know what I was doing. When I started to kind of look into the rabbit hole, I got vacuumed in and it's like, oh my, this is just really deeper than I thought it was. And then I kind of went into a journey from a very lucrative beginning to a point where I don't actually care anymore how much Bitcoins are worth in quote dollars or whatever currency yeah. you want to pack it with because one Bitcoin is one Bitcoin, right? But where do you think retail is? Because I don't know if you agree with me, but I don't think we've seen retail yet. Not at all. We have seen the ETFs, they make up about 20% of the, the Bitcoin market. And so with those numbers, I guess there has been a couple of new entrants coming in for like the, the number go up. But as for the, the bull run and when things get real frothy, we're only just now sort of starting to see the drips and drabs on mainstream news. And it's not until the hairdressers talking about it, the taxi drivers talking about it, you're going into the shops, just random people 
are talking about. It's all over the news. It's back in the newspapers. It's, you know, on CNBC a, a, a little bit, the BBC, MSN. And that's coming. We've seen it cycle after cycle after cycle. And within Bitcoin, like being right down the rabbit hole, we're grabbing like every single piece. So for us, it feels like there's all this media attention at the moment. But in the scheme of things, it's so small. What I believe is going to happen, judging by past cycles, is the media machine is going to ramp it up because number go up is good for for their views. That's all they care about is getting people to watch their show. When that number goes up or when it starts to get frothy, it starts to get really volatile. It's something we talk about in my show a lot. We're going to have days where it goes up 10, 20, $30,000 up. But on the same hand, it's going to have days like we saw last week where it went down $10,000 in a single day. We'll get $20,000 drops, $30,000 drops. At those times, that's when the media is going to have a lot of fun with it because the volatility is something new to talk about all the time. Once that happens, then retail starts coming in. They start FOMO and back into YouTube, back onto X, gets really excited. They start talking to their friends and then you get this huge wave of FOMO, the fear of missing out, and the volatility kicks kicks off really high and going into the bull market like we have been bull market for a while if it's judging by history we've got another 12 or 18 months left but as we get towards the end of it there's more and more people going and the numbers just jump quicker and quicker so we're like nowhere near any of that at all i think it's just about to get really exciting q4 of this year is going to be like the start of the unaware retail coming in. Maybe the retail that's here is from last cycle or they've had a couple of touch points already. But most people don't buy Bitcoin the first time they hear about it, yeah? I was talking to a friend the other night and he's a successful trader, which is kind of a rare species because most of the traders are losing money. So he's very successful in what he does. And I was telling him, you know, just like I was kind of poking the bear, as we say, I say, hey, you know, I think Bitcoin does Bitcoin and we're trying to justify with events and, and things why he's doing it. But I think he's doing it regardless. For example, there's a seasonality with Bitcoin, as we know. I don't think Satoshi, they probably, they, I like to think it was more than one person, but that's my opinion. I think they knew what they were doing with the four-year cycle, with the election cycle. Money move in a very predictable way. You have seasonality in money. So the fact that we have, like you said, the election coming in on November 15th, the States is going to impact the price of Bitcoin. The fact that we have summer, selling may go away. We have the stock market. We are still somewhat, I believe, correlated to whatever happens to the world. If there is a prospect of war, for example, we dump because at the end of the day, for now, it's still a risk asset. So people are trading it you know, accordingly. Besides you and me, we probably hodl no matter what, and we buy into this thing as much as we can. I think the majority of the people, like you painted, are going to come in, buy the top, sell the bottom, get slapped left and right, go away, or maybe some will stay and they'll learn that you have to have a long time frame, I think, if you want to win the game, because if you are in for the short term, you're going to get punished, I think, by Bitcoin. We have a four-year cycle where Bitcoin is dancing with some sort of a data we've seen so far. Do you also agree on those cycles and those four-year cycles? Currently, I do, Mauricio, um, but due to the the block or the halving every 210,000 blocks, eventually over time, it is going to shift and it's going to be outside that four-year cycle. But again, Bitcoin is only 15 years old. We're still early and Satoshi, whoever they or them or that person, that individual was, definitely knew what was going on with the liquidity cycles, the presidential cycles. And it was set up so perfect to organically market itself. And I think that will last quite a while. And then for your second point there, when people jump in with that FOMO, most people are going to disappear. But there will be, as Alex Fetsky says, the remnant will stay. They're the people that get into it. They come here for number go up. They get all excited about it. And they're like, what is this? I want to know more about it. And they start to put in the proof of work. And they start to read the books, Beers for Bitcoin, Parallel 
well. The hidden cost of money, crypto sovereignty, they go through all of it, reading the Bitcoin Times. And those people will then benefit better off in the long run because as Bitcoin comes down from that FOMO high, that blow off top, they're stacking like crazy. And then maybe they turn into someone like us that just cannot stop talking about it. And they may not have even made any money in it, but they understand fundamentally that mathematically Bitcoin is going up and to the right forever for as long as we live on two conditions. Number one, it stays decentralized. Number two, it stays secure as Jeff Booth says. But those people that have that mindset shift, uh, the new remnant, they're the people that ultimately we want around us that are going to help shape and bring Bitcoin to the masses over a longer period of time. And the greatest thing about this, Mauricio, is it's from the bottom up. It's not from the top down, which is absolutely amazing. There, there is no CEO, there, there's nobody mandating, there's no king, a set rules, no rulers. These four-year cycles, the ups and downs, it allows, like the, the, the down, I believe, is what's even more important than the up. Because like yourself, the number going up really doesn't matter. When it comes down, though, it's the time to be able to build your conviction, get educated, educate others, and realize that, yes, short term, it's volatile, but over a long term, it's volatile to the upside. And while we've got this time, you're still earning fiat when on hyperinflation, we've got an opportunity to be able to provide value to the world in whatever way that is through whatever business, work in a job, an entrepreneurial venture, and any way to be able to turn as much dirty fiat into the world's hardest asset. What I appreciate about the bull market is it does bring new people in and hopefully we can just get them to to read the books, put in the proof of work and realize instead of, I'm going to get rich in the next 12 months. Yes, maybe. That's probably most likely with where we are in the cycle. I understand that. But just zoom out. Over a five-year time period, Bitcoin has never done less than 98.8% returns. The second one to that, the second lowest returns is 200% over five years. So if you start to go from like over the next 12 months, I'm going to get super rich to over the next five years, I'm going to get super wealthy. Imagine if I held it for 10 years. Wow, real cool. Imagine if I held it for 20, 30, 50 years. I need to start thinking about a two or 300 year plan, passing this on generation after generation after generation, which is really the first time in history that we can do this. Maybe gold was the, the, the second closest opportunity to be able to store wealth for a very long time, very hard to move, weighs a lot. You can't take it over borders. Somebody can come to your house and take it away. People can't steal 12 or 24 words in your head. So to be able to learn these things, it's an incredible opportunity and both parts of the cycle do really well I guess for people the the bull market brings people in the bear market builds that conviction and then as we go through from a, a bear market now we've got uh, both of us and everyone out there that's got an audience whether it's on medium x youtube and whatever regard they've got a community of people that have been paying attention putting in the proof of work in these hard times making themselves hard men hard women and they're going to go out and provide better education now to their friends and family and ultimately the more the quicker people educate themselves on Bitcoin, the sooner we can separate money from state that has been destroying humanity for a very long time. It's like seeing a new color. You cannot unsee it. It is there, right? And volatility, like Natalie Brunel said, it's a feature, it's not a bug. Building in the bear market, I call it the build market because then essentially what we are doing, we are building. We are building an audience, a community. We are building an idea. We are propagating a message. And then there's going to be a time when we pass the all-time high. People are gonna FOMO into it. They will see on their, they'll see on the TV, hear on the radio. Oh, Bitcoin at 90k. Oh my God, I need to go and buy it before it goes on the moon. They'll probably buy the top. They get slapped, sell the bottom, and then another cycle begins. What's your view on ETFs? I mean, do you think they're a good thing or they are a bad thing? Uh, it, it depends, really. I think, and I was talking to Walker this morning about this, I think the ETFs are very, very beneficial for the sheep out there, those people that are unwilling to take 100% self-responsibility for their economic future. It's very easy because they're already not doing anything. They're going to continue not to do anything. These are the leeches, the lazy people in society, or those people that are just suffering 
suffering from inflation, they're working one, two, three jobs, and they don't have the time to be able to understand or learn what they're working for their entire lives, this worthless fiat toilet paper. For those people, absolutely fantastic. They get exposed to number go up. Like, great, well done. For the average person that has the option, to, they're putting their own funds in, they're investing. 100% self-responsibility here in Australia, and thank God there's getting pushback, but they were talking about taxing. So we've got a superannuation system, which is our pension system, um, sort of like a, a, a 401k account, I, I dare say, like for retirement, the employer puts money in there on your behalf. The Australian government wanted to tax unrealized capital gains over $3 million in those accounts. So the state's already thinking about, they see this honeypot, they want to steal it. Bitcoin is self-custody. Like, can try me, bro. Like, what are you gonna do? What, like, what are they gonna do? I don't have it. I lost, I lost those words. I don't remember those words. Or they're gonna have to go around to each individual. And those people that have Bitcoin and self custody, they're gonna be like, ah, oh, this state's turned totalitarian. F that I'm out. I'm going. I am now a sovereign, free individual. Like that book, the self the sovereign individual. We've got that opportunity now through Bitcoin. So not to take the responsibility because it's too hard, it's too scary. I understand it is hard, but it's not scary. It's just a process you need to learn. Like I've got a sponsor, the best person within Bitcoin, I believe, to just educate people on how to take 100% self-responsibility. Learn it, run an air gap node, have a node which is just there, just out to be your own bank. Barack Obama called Bitcoin a Swiss bank account in your pocket, like a bad thing. My wife said, that sounds like the best advertisement ever. Who wouldn't want that? It's <laughs> exactly. the tools of, of the rich. We've got this opportunity now. So to be able to stop the fiat system, which funds wars. And that's another thing that the Australian government was talking about, of using that superannuation funds to be able to fund things like war or whatever they want to fund with it. Because we're not holding that money, it's like in the bank, we think it's our money, but it's not our money. It's just an IOU. So for a personal, for an individual, should they hold Bitcoin and self-custody of the ETF? If you're happy with the government to come along at any stage for any reason to be able to take your money that you've worked so hard for, leave it in the ETF. Be my guest for for people that want to lead a dignified life. And maybe the worst never happens, like great. But what if it does? It's too late by then. So you can prepare now. You're still exposed to number go up, but you get all these added benefits. For me, it's absolute common sense. It's really not that hard to be able to do. You can go there like BTC sessions on YouTube and you can get pretty much all the information for free or you can work with someone like like my sponsor or other people in the space to be able to just learn what it is, do it. And then through that process, you become a better person because you're taking now responsibility for your money, but then you take responsibility for your health, the information you consume. Maybe you turn off the TV. I've got a massive big TV in the studio, Mauricio, you've probably seen on the live shows. All yep. I show behind me is the price of Bitcoin. There's no aerial. We've got an antenna on the roof. It's had a cut cable for like seven years. I haven't watched TV, <laughs> mainstream TV, for maybe like 18 years. I don't listen to mainstream music. There's like 10 songs that I listen to because all of it's programming us on so many levels to get us to think, to act in a certain way. People just buy it because they're programmed to do those things to trust the state. Don't worry, we'll look after you with your, your retirement. You just put money into the super until they change their mind. They're like, oh, actually, um, you're not going to give us money for a war. So we're just going to take this big honeypot that's sitting there. So is it important? Hell yeah, it's important. Like just opt out and maybe the worst doesn't happen. But if it does, you can just get up and go and be like, see you later. And if they see enough of a brain drain, they may change their tune. Now we can hold, hold them to account. Self-custody is my favorite properties of Bitcoin. Of course, I mean, I'm wearing a Satoshi hat. So uh, like you, I'm, I'm all for it. But at the same time, I also understand why some people don't want to have that responsibility, right? Because it goes beyond the 12 words, like how I store it, where do I put it? How do I pass it on to someone that I love? Who do I trust? So it becomes quite, quite tricky. And 
I think it's still early days. Like I was trying to explain to a friend the other day, buy a treasure and do this and do that. And she was like, I don't even know what this is. I don't know how to connect it. Where do I put the words? Do I put it into a safe? Do I give it to a lawyer? I mean, it, get, it becomes quite tricky, right? And like you said, it's a journey. And I love the fact that I can be my own bank. And I love to be responsible. When I talk to people like you, super well-educated, super into the Bitcoin orange pill like I am, I'm like, ah, damn, I know, right? It's, it's so nice to be in charge. But then sometimes I talk to other people and they go, no, 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 I want no responsibility. You just want to invest in something good. And if you think about gold, for example, I mean, I have no exposure in gold as we speak, but who owns their gold? Nobody owns it. Like they, they trust someone who has it for them in their custody. They pay a cavo, a bank or a service, but they don't have it. They have a promise. Da Vinci explains it so well when he says, when you go to a restaurant and you want to give your jacket to the reception or to whatever who's holding it because you want to sit and eat, you give away your jacket, they give you a token with a number, 21. You don't have your jacket anymore. They have the jacket. You have a number. You have a promise of a jacket, but they can do whatever they want. Yep. They can wear it, burn it, sell it, break it into pieces. And they all, all have to do, they promise you a jacket. And if you go to court because they've sold your jacket, they only have to pay you the amount of dollars whatever the currency might be, that the jacket was worth at the time of the exchange, which is insane. Because if you think about an asset like Bitcoin, who goes up a lot on average, I can buy the Bitcoin, say that it's yours, and then when you want it, I was like, ah, oh, shoot, sorry, I don't have it anymore, but don't worry, let me print some currency and I'll give you that. So that's the oldest trick in the game. And it's so there for us to see. It's like, can you please take custody of this thing? Because... Custody is one of the most important properties, but at the same time, the fact that you can transfer it really fast, you can divide it into Satoshis, there's probably like a bucket of features of this thing. And talking with, you know, Matt Hogan, CIO, talking with British Huddles, they are really big pushers on ETFs and they're saying, well, if you are an institution, if you're a pension fund, you can do self-custody. So I think there is like a rainbow of options. I can send you money now with no third party immediately. It could be a weekend, it could be a Sunday a bank holiday, doesn't matter. I send you value, no third party involved. Amazing, right? So we can be sovereign. This, this on its own is magic, if you think about it. But maybe for some people, they just want to find a way to store their energy, right? Store their wealth. Like you said, finally, I can rant with someone who understands what, <laughs> what I'm saying. <laughs> you know what I mean? Within the, the Bitcoin space, so I want to talk in a couple of things that you're talking about, but the only time that I really feel normal, that I feel heard or listened to, or I can converse properly, have proper discourse with, and we may disagree about different things, but we can have an open conversation is with Bitcoiners or people that are put in the proof of work. And so like the, the, there's cheat code here in Australia coming up. What Bitcoin did, Peter McCormack is running a conference. And within the Bitcoin community, people say you're better off to stack Bitcoin than go to a conference. And I agree with that. If you're new to Bitcoin, do everything you can to go as hard, as fast as you can to get as much Bitcoin as you possibly can. And if you can do that for four solid years and then just start saving in Bitcoin, happy days. But once you get to a certain point and all you can do is think about Bitcoin, talk about Bitcoin, and you're surrounded by quote unquote normies that are sheep that are so switched off to life and everything's so hard and they're struggling with the cost of inflation in their life because they haven't taken responsibility for anything in their life, it is 100% beneficial to go to something like a Bitcoin conference or a Bitcoin meetup and just be around like-minded people and expand. And maybe you meet business partners, maybe you just create new friendships, or maybe it just allows you to do the same thing for another four years. So that's one point. The second thing you're saying, Mauricio, and we sort of touched on it, is people aren't willing to take self-responsibility. They want to go into the ETF because it's easy and great. Like I understand that. And that's all well and good while everything's well and good. But gold 6102, it got confiscated or it became illegal to be able to hold. Like these things can go and we have no idea how much gold has been rehypothecated or the banks leaving money in a bank if the bank goes bust here in australia if you've got under two hundred and fifty thousand dollars, they'll just print more money and reimburse everyone but when they print more money they devalue that further and further and further okay so all, all of that aside I want to buy number go up. I want to hold the Bitcoin ETF and you're exposed. But then what if the government's like, 
All right, this Bitcoin thing, it's illegal for you to hold. We're going to sell it at, at market price and then they put it onto their balance sheet or something hypothetical, you know, it, very, very unlikely to happen. I'm going to the extreme here. They revalue Bitcoin like they did with gold from what, 25 to $32 an ounce. So maybe we're at $1 million a Bitcoin. They revalue it at $10 million a Bitcoin. But because you were too lazy, whoever is listening, whoever needs to hear this, to take help responsibility. It's not hard. Like it's truly not hard. They're just steps. They're just processes. Everyone learned to be able to drive a car. You learn to use a credit card. You learn to use your mobile phone. You learn to go to the toilet, you know, to be able to shower yourself. Everything in life, we just learn whatever it is. You know, people go to space and, and rocket ships or Elon Musk builds rocket ships. He learns how to do that. We can achieve absolutely anything. We just need to be able to take the time. And if you've got a good teacher to be able to do it, you can fast pace that. But being like, no, I, I don't have the time or I'm not willing to take responsibility for you. I hope nothing bad ever happens and the government doesn't come after it or they don't want to tax unrealized capital gains. But if you set yourself up now, if you do what is hard, your life will be easy. But if you continue to keep doing the easy thing, your life is going to be hard or more likely to be hard. So for everyone listening, please just do it. And the more people that do it, the the fiat system's failing, but it's going to speed it up more and more. It's like cutting its oxygen off and directly money printing leads to wars and just the clown world in general. Like, why wouldn't you want to be part of that revolution and get fabulously wealthy at the same time? My light bulb moment was when I realized what ownership is and what is it I really own. And like you said, you just need to remember 12 words. That's it. You can go anywhere. You can carry a tremendous amount of wealth. You can transfer wealth from one person to another without anyone being involved. This is a superpower, right? So it's incredible how much there is to understand and it's crazy if i don't know if you follow the fear and greed indicator which is one of my favorite now we are like flashing lows like the entire week was 25 30 which means the market it's really fearful and we are talking about sixty thousand dollars more or less bitcoin which is complete bananas we have october or pump october moon november to come next so I don't know if you are as much excited as I am, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> buckle up, brother. <laughs> it's going to be yeah. a good couple of months. I was having this conversation with, with Bruce and he made a pretty good point. He, he doesn't get excited. On the other hand, I do get excited with number go up for the pure joy of the new people coming into the space because exactly. we are going to find those, those remnants there. But with the fear and greed indicator, I'll bring that up. Uh, once or twice a week and being in mass fear, like you're saying, it's $60,000. It is so absurd, but actually it's very healthy. And to have these pullbacks coming from 74 down to $48,000 and then snapping sort of back up to 58,000 and staying at 50,000, what it feels like the last six months, uh, maybe for the last three, but we're putting in a really solid floor Having fear in the market means the people that are buying are the people that are convinced to buy and hold this thing forever or for as long as possible. They've got a, a different time perspective on it and they're not just in here for the quick gains and those people will come in and then as the price ticks up a little bit, you'll get people that have a little bit less conviction and that will layer on and then you'll get the DGENs and the traders come and they'll put on 100x leverage and stuff and then we start wicking up and then we'll need to come back down, find a new floor and maybe the next healthy floor is 71, 74,000 once we break above it, say, to 80, 85,000, then come back and reset. And then we want to see that fear and greed index come back down. And the longer it can stay in these low numbers and fear or extreme fear while we're still in a market uptrend, the healthier it is for the market and ultimately the higher, more sustainable we can go. But it'll also prevent... Like we still may get an 80% drop or 85%, 86%. But if we've built a really strong floor at say like $58,000, even if it works all the way down to 30, for example, it's going to come back to that $58,000 level so quick. And it just puts a new floor. It's like building a building and you've got a very solid foundation you go up and you put another concrete floor where you can still take the stairs back down, but you can come back up and you've got another perch to be able to build and then be able to erect the scaffolding, build it more and more. And as 
all this new money comes and we want to build the building quicker and quicker and we haven't caught up with putting in solid concrete floor foundations so we may crash through until we hit that concrete and then we'll start building up slowly again it just repeats over and over but i think it is useful not as a trading indicator um i think people personally i just think most people if you're a professional trader like your friend like have fun doing that maybe that's 10 percent of people i want to talk to the nine out of ten people the average everyday person from a very selfish place bitcoin's benefited me and so many ways it's freed up my time it's freed up my mind my health my body the world is absolutely beautiful glorious i want other people to experience that so there's somebody to hang hang out with i'm not sure what day it is uh thursday today most people are at work and i get to sit here and talk to another bitcoiner i want other people to go out to the jet ski the ocean super flat if i didn't have house jobs to do painting concrete and then things i would have gone out sparing but there's nobody to play with like that's what what i want and to be able to get people to come in and get used to buying an extreme fear is going to forge those people like a, a diamond it's made under pressure and they're the people that i want in my life that i want to associate that i want to talk to that i want to know or just know that they're out there for other people and they're going to rise up and say like what what peter's thinking about doing running for mayor when you get this purchasing power and you don't need the wealth anymore you can do it just from a place of wanting to give back wanting to make things better which ultimately makes everything better for everyone regardless if they're a bitcoin or not but it needs to come from the bitcoiners that have conviction we have presidential candidates pandering to bitcoiners because they're such a strong voter base they're such strong individuals and they have a significant amount of wealth and a voice and they just don't give a about any of the psyop any of the misinformation the programming the propaganda going on they're like that's all bull let's just talk straight none of their tactics work anymore they can't be like ah oh, we're going to cancel you we're going to shut your bank account down good luck like what are they <laughs> going to do you you know like so 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 in every way all of it lines up and back to the the fear and greed i think it's very important for people now to be able to pay attention to these things or even the power law for example what i love about the power law is it shows bitcoin goes up into the right forever like same with the stock to flow bitcoin goes up into the right forever if you look at bitcoin's history it goes up into the right forever it's going to continue to do that all of these things are saying Bitcoin's going up into the right forever. When you pair that with the fear and greed index and we're in fear or extreme fear or we're neutral or whatever, and then you have the the stock to stock to flow or the power law and you're like, oh, cool. Like, I just need to buy this. It's cheap. Be greedy when others are fearful, like Warren Buffett says, because you know you're going to hold it long term. And if it keeps only following the power law or the stock to flow or whatever, it goes way above it, you're all good. But you're building your conviction from many different places. And then with all those things, so that's like one part of the equation. And I'm not saying trade with them, just use them to get your conviction to be able to buy initially, to continue to be able to buy when we have a $10,000 dump. So many people were freaking out last week when we were down at $48,000. I was buying, I was buying at $52,000, $60,000, buying at $74,000. I'll buy at $100,000. But that only comes because I know Bitcoin it's going to go up and to the right forever and also reading the books you can't just listen to to youtubers you could listen to a lot i guess and get the information but you need to sort of go everywhere reading medium articles going on x hearing the conversation the discord listening to podcasts and reading the books where an author's gone really deep from ten thousand hours of study and they put it into a book that you can read in six to eight hours and stacking these on top of each other they're all part of that stack to build your conviction that bitcoin's the only money really here the second closest is gold as we've discussed it doesn't work really that well um, in a digital economy especially you know in an internet age especially moving it over borders if things were to get totalitarian if you can hold all those beliefs see things whatever brings you into the space and then just please just put in the proof of work because your life will very quickly get better whether you buy at the high and you need a way to hold another four years 
so be it. Have a five-year time frame. It's really five years is going to go past regardless, you know, and then 10 years and a lot of us, you're telling me, you know, your age before we went live. I'm like, holy mate, you are, you're looking so, so good. But I wouldn't have expected that. For you, if you look back, you may still feel young, but you're like, where'd the last 20 years go? It's all the Bitcoin, by the way. It's all the love. <laughs> so, <laughs> but I could agree with you. Like, at, at the end of the day, what do we want? I mean, what I want is time, right? So how do I unlock time? Well, take an amount of money you're willing to invest or lose, spread your buying, DCA, have a long time frame and have custody of your asset. That's it. It's just like super simple things. Whether what we find nowadays, people want stuff now and they buy shit. they don't need money they don't have because they've seen some sort of a random advertisement on some social media, <laughs> you know, it's, it's the other way around, you know, it's it's, TV, it's, bro. I don't watch TV either, by the way. So I completely agree with you. And by the way, we should do some stuff together because I, I love the energy. <laughs> it's like, I have another brother now in Australia. <laughs> so oh, <nice>. man. <laughs> Anytime you travel to Australia, like we live in this tiny little isolated town, but if we go up, you know, to our, our living um, deck, it's a two-story house, we, we look out at the Great Barrier Reef or like islands surrounded by um reef so come out or take your snorkeling there are sharks um not man eaters sort of i i guess like um a couple bull sharks are a little bit bullies but if the water's clear they're all all good but there's nemo literally like finding nemo there's giant clams and stuff it's absolutely amazing um uh, man so you're more than welcome uh, to be able to come over here and we'd look forward to being able to host you at our place thank you likewise if you ever want to come to dubai abibi you know we have a we have a, a spot for you as well but sean you've been an absolute gentleman thank you so much man i really enjoyed our conversation it's been a real pleasure thank you as always in the links down below you will find sean's channel thank you for contributing in the space enjoy the rest of the day it was great having you thank you very much speak soon okay cheers mate peace <laughs> cheers bye bye, -bye.